Howdy folks, welcome back. It's nice to be talking to you guys live. I think this is what, the third or fourth live TOG life that we've done in New York. <laughs> moving halfway around the world and I'm just never here. I've been traveling so much, but thank you to those who are joining us live. If you are, get involved in the chat room. Chris, my videographer and assistant, is there under the username Siege Cinema. I assume you named that after that um, Steven Seagal movie, Under Siege? No. Yeah, big fan. <laughs> um, so, First of all, if you aren't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring that bell to make sure you get notifications so when we next do something live like this, you hear about it. We are planning to do some more interactive stuff where just by being in the room whilst we're doing it live, you can win some prizes, so do get involved. It's been a crazy time. I'll talk to you more about what's been going on and what's coming up soon, but I am at the tail end of five straight days in studio, which is a lot. I think the long, well, easily the longest we've had this month. And tomorrow I'm flying out to Namibia to lead a safari tour there, which I'm really excited about. You can find out details on all my travels and all my different download courses and stuff over at mattgranger.com forward slash workshops. So, to start things off for this week, I want to introduce this week's uh, sponsor. You might have noticed in the last couple of months, uh, the videos we've been putting out are getting higher and higher quality. I hope you've been noticing that. And we've been using better uh, music to back up the videos. I actually have started using Soundstripe. I met the guys who founded the company in uh, Las Vegas at NAB however long that ago that was, maybe a month. Really, really nice, genuine, lovely guys, and I'm really glad to be, you know, kind of partnering with them when they're just getting started to be able to bring them to you guys because they're, they're really nice guys, the content they have is excellent, and they're all musicians themselves, so the deal they've struck is much more in favor of the musicians than a lot of the big music libraries out there where artists often get very little out of it. So do check them out. We're going to be giving away one of their unlimited membership accounts uh, for a year to the winner of this week's photo of the week. And if you want to sign up yourself, if you jump on over to soundstripe.com and use the code MATTG, you'll get 10% off and you can do that either monthly or annually. I don't get a kickback for that. That's just uh, something that they're offering you guys in support of Tog Life. So let's actually, well, let's talk a little bit about what's been going on before I get into it. I hope you saw on Wednesday, two days ago now, I released a video about pulling files from 8K video that we shot with Stephanie. I have to say the response we've had after having her on the channel a few times has been really, really, really fantastic. And I'm so happy to hear that because Chris and I love working with her as well. She's She's everything you want in a model, apart from having just the cutest damn dimples you can imagine. She's got three, is that even like legal? She's smart and funny and she's a Taekwondo black belt and she's, you know, she's a YouTuber herself. She's great on camera. So it's great to know that you guys are loving the interaction as well. She was actually here yesterday and we filmed a couple of videos as well. So they'll be going out whilst I'm on the road in Namibia. Um, it's been a whirlwind couple of weeks. I kind of went through it. Uh, if you've been following, you'd know all of this, but Chris and I were in Japan doing some work for clients and filming some stuff that will come to YouTube in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we were filming with some great Sony video cameras that we were actually testing out there as well. Then back to NAB, really great show. Back to New York for, I think it was two days, then off to Bhutan, led a tour there. Awesome group, it was really nice to meet some of you. Uh, that have been viewers for a long time face to face was really fun. I have uh, met some great new friends that are actually in the States who I'll be no doubt catching up as I travel around, so that's cool. And as I said, tomorrow heading off to Namibia to run another tour with my co tour leader, Jonathan Stewart. And I know there's some of, at least one of the group who are joining us there are in the room now, so nice to see you, Turge. Um, oh, it's great to see the chat is blowing up. Hello, Hans, Christian, Pat, Mason, and everyone. So let's actually take a look at our um, photo of the week. Uh, this week's theme was cinematic because we're, you know, the sponsor is Soundstripe. I thought to kick that off, let's do it as something that has a clear tie because this is not a show that lends itself live to having uh, backing tracks yet. Maybe as we ramp things up, we can do that. 
Um, so, photo of the week, we culled it down to five entries. Thank you to everyone who entered, though. It was a little bit last minute getting the theme out there. So it was great to see some people got their shots in. So the first shot here, I'm sorry, I didn't queue up with you which order they would go in, but this first one is Don, oh, sorry, Juan Roa. This is a lovely shot. I'm not sure it's a couple on a balcony looking out over maybe London. It's hard to tell. It certainly looks like a European city. And this to me does absolutely look like a shot from uh, a movie. I would, I don't know. It's the Vatican. It's the Vatican? I, I, don't, I can't confirm that, but it looks like. Good. Have you been to I Vatican not. City? It's just because it's got a vague arch. I don't think the Vatican has that many high-rise buildings in the background. Uh, I don't think that's the Vatican, but we can Rochambeau about it later. Um, I actually really like that we're seeing his profile like that and we're not seeing hers. If this was just a, a standard photo, I'd bit like to see a bit of both of them, but the fact that they're there looking out over the city, he's looking to her, but she's looking away, kind of creates a bit more tension there. So I think that's actually a great entry. Next one from Daiki Skuchida, a shot from Japan, a little back alley somewhere. Look, I think it has potential, but I think it's a little bit too cluttered to be a really striking shot. So maybe if it was shot more at night when it was darker, so the ambience lower, and then those spotlights that are up the top are doing more of a job, it would have a bit more ambience. And then having the, the meter box on the left of the frame there, to me is a little bit distracting. A cleaner shot of an alleyway with just some key lit elements, I think would work even better. But well spotted, just try it maybe at different times of day. Next one is DSC 06668 <laughs> from Blake Parry. Um, I have to say that's a really lucky file number. The Chinese think six and eight are both really fortunate numbers. So 6668, you're in with a good chance already, me being a hugely uh, superstitious person. Uh, so this is a really nicely manicured shot. Great separation of her from the background. The skin tones are lovely. It's crisp where it should be. It's soft where it looks good to be soft. The only thing I'd say with that much foreground blurring out like that, I would really like to see this lower to the ground so that that foreground is kind of stacked up on top of each other. And if it's gonna be a cinematic shot, they tend to work better as a portrait, uh, landscape orientation because we don't look at cinema as a portrait oriented shot. So having the space left to right is what we expect when we're looking at a cinema still. But it's certainly the woman in the cloak uh, maybe just bringing down the exposure a little bit to make it tie in with the cloak would maybe make the overall theme work a bit better. Next one from Solacito, California, who obviously that's where it was taken, not who took it. I don't actually have the person's name here, but it's nice. It looks like you're actually up on a hill looking down, but it gives you that same kind of perspective that you get using aerial footage. It reminds me, remind me, Chris, I need to pack the drone for my next trip. It's been a really busy week. I haven't actually packed for my trip tomorrow. Um, I like this and I love the long streaming headlights through it. Um, the high vantage point does work really well. I just, it's kind of missing something. I'm not sure, maybe the, if the angle was a little bit more to the left, so then that leading line of the car tail lights is taking us into the shot. I'm not sure and I don't know, it's close. I can certainly see what you're going for there. Maybe just uh, because the foreground is also dark, but that's where the interest is. And then the water and sky is a lot brighter, but there's not that much going on there. Maybe that's the disconnect I'm feeling. And lucky last from Thomas Kulstrom. Uh, this, well, this again is in portrait orientation, but the dramatic lighting here totally does look like a, a cinema, a still from a cinema, uh, sorry, from a motion picture, or even, a, you know, a headshot to accompany it. So I don't know if this is the, the dashing hero or the villain or the, the whatever, but great detail through the shot, and it does feel like it's got a certain grade to it that could be used for storytelling purposes in video as well. So, three, four, five great shots there. 
<sighs> Which one to win the prize? I'm kind of torn between a couple of them. I think I'm gonna give it to our first one, Juan Roa with the mysterious city in the background that is definitely not Vatican City, but could be any other European city. Uh, is there someone in the chat confirmed where it was? Uh, I have not seen. Um, Somebody should tell us. Yeah, if you do know, let us know in the chat. So congratulations, Juan. Uh, we will be in touch. Justin will most likely be in touch to get your details so that we can sign you up for a one year membership to Soundstripe. Thank you all for entering. And next theme, I can't say it's going to be in a week because I will be in Namibia. I'm going to have to film it on location, edit it and upload it. But the next Hog Life theme is actually going to be travel photography, fitting given the amount I've been doing lately. And for that one, we have a special prize, one of these guys. Now that may look like a tiny Rimoa suitcase. It really does actually. Um, but it's a, a portable power bank. I got these during the week I was searching them out. I'm actually, a, well you probably know, a, a heavy duty user of this kind of equipment. One in terms of how rough I am with it, but two in terms of the amount of juice I run through. This is an absolute monster. They rate these things in a different way. You know, they talk about the MAH. So this is 26,800 MAH, but it's 99.2 watt hours. So it's just in the limit that you can carry on to planes or the biggest that you can have in a laptop, that kind of thing. It's got four ports and it's all metal construction. They show it, you know, with the car parked on top of it to show how strong it is. Best thing, in my opinion, is that it's Qualcomm 3.0 fast charge in and out. So enter your travel shots. You can jump on over to mattgranger.com forward slash toglife and they're going to be sending out one of these to the winner that I choose in that next episode it's great, and I'm taking that to Namibia, so you'll see more of that, no doubt. So, 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 do jump on over and check that out. I'm sorry, we haven't stopped all day, and I need some water. People think it's Berlin, but... Uh, could be, that could be the, um, what do you call it, the, the parliament in the background has got this really crazy staircase going up. We should go to Germany. Do you want to go to Germany? Yeah. Okay. Everywhere I say, do you want to go there? He's just like, yes, I, I, I want to go there. He's an enthusiastic traveler now. So let's talk some news. It's been a while since I've done a Tog Life. There's been a lot going on, so apologies I have missed some of that, but I know a lot of you guys watch other shows, including like Tony and Chelsea's live show, and I'm sure they covered the main news stories in previous weeks anyway. So first one is, this is really unfortunate, um, just throw up the graphic of the wedding proposal there, Chris. So, uh, photographer Peter Jacob Peters, that's his image, copyright goes to him. Um, dude, I really feel your pain. This is rough. When I read it, I was kind of cringing and like it could so easily happen. So, I guess the gentleman hired uh, Pete Jacob to um, shoot an engagement shot so they worked out where they were going to be and it was you know in a national park and he was getting up at 2 30 in the morning to get there on time for the 6 a.m proposal got there professional on time lined it all up long lens saw the proposal shot it all done job done got the shot leaving then found out got a message from the guy apologizing sorry we were a couple of hours late there was traffic blah 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 so this poor guy by total chance Another proposal went on at six in the morning and he shot the wrong one. Oh, what a bugger, right? So uh, the story goes then that he actually somehow found the couple whose proposal it really was, gave them the photos for free, didn't charge the other couple. So he's probably now got two potential future clients because of being such a nice guy about it. You know, that could just happen, right? Um, I feel for you, man, that's rough. Um, some news from Sony. Now, they've announced two new uh, wide-angle or ultra-wide-angle lenses, both full frame. And I've said this before, Sony is just like the most divisive word in photography at the moment, and I really don't get it. They're, I'm sure there's a big majority, like me, or a big segment anyway, who are what I consider to be fair and rational and kind of center on this issue. 
but the most vocal camps, it's like talking about Apple or something. Uh, oh my God, it's amazing. Everything they do is perfect. Nothing is ever wrong. Overlook all of any potential shortcomings. And the others that just won't concede that there's any value to it, think they're totally rubbish and are completely unrealistic about it and unfair. I'm certainly in the middle. They're making some great cameras now. Their market is growing for a reason. And as I've been saying for over a year now, it, they had a kind of, they're spoiled by their success that the bodies have been so popular that now they have to play catch up with all of the accessories, including lenses. So this is just the natural next step in the development of the Sony full frame mirrorless lineup that they, they're expanding out their range. So it's great to see. And for those who've been waiting for full frame ultra wide angle zooms, this is great news. They have got two. One is a lightweight, cheaper one. That's a 12 to 24 uh, f4, and then a premium 16 to 35 2.8. Now, the only thing that strikes me a little unusual. I mean, Canon has a 16 to 35 2.8. I guess as a Nikon shooter, I always think of 16 to 35 being an f4 lens. It would just be that with the 16 to 35 being the premium one and the f2.8 one, and the one that they're giving the G Master seal of approval to. It's not that wide considering some of the other options out there, you know, and you have to keep in mind, we might say one millimeter difference, but when you're down in ultra wide territory, one millimeter makes a big difference. Going from 99 to 100 millimeters, that's only 1%, but going from 20 to 19 millimeters, that's 5%. And you know, 14 to 13 is a bigger number again, right? So Nikon's ultra wide is a 14 to 24, Tamron make a 15 to 30, Canon make an 11 to 24, so 16 to 35, it's wide, but it's not quite in that ultra wide of 14, 12, 11. Anyway, you know, it does round out the trilogy nicely, 16 to 35, 24 to 70, 70 to 200. So I know it's gonna sell like crazy and it's a, it's a good next step anyway. So one here, I'm not sure if I gave you an image of this or not, Chris, if I did, it's a big copyright symbol. Um, it's a, I'll put links to all of this in the caption below so you can read all of the details, but great to see it's a big copyright win of a company who had made all of these photos for their, it's actually their plant technology, some step onable plants that some other website and company had used the photos as if they were their own in a commercial way and actually got a $900,000 ruling in their favor of the copyright owner. So if you've ever had stuff stolen online, it's good to see this kind of thing happening. If you've ever accidentally used someone else's work, then it's kind of a wake up call that you need to be really careful about what you're doing. Not that this sounds like it was accidental. Next news piece, and I didn't give you an image for this one, Chris, but if you're in New York, this actually affects you specifically. Um, a bill has just passed in New York called Freelance Isn't Free Act, um, which basically, if you're a freelancer and you're servicing customers in New York City, this gives you a whole bunch of rights that formerly you didn't really have, including uh, what are the payment terms and all of these different things that often freelancers are left out on their own to negotiate. Now there's minimum expectations that if you're performing work of $800 or more within a four month period, the employers needs to give you a written contract and all of this kind of thing. So this could actually uh, apply to Steph in future if we're working with her more. Uh, already, you know, if in America, if you're going over a certain amount of payment in a year, you need to do certain paperwork, even if it's a contractor. This now would say that if you're doing $200 a month for four months in a row, that you need a written contract on top of all of that. So it could potentially, as an employer of freelancers, make my life more difficult, but it could also make my work as a freelancer to other New York companies a little bit less risky. So that's a good thing. Good to keep your head across all of this. Next up, TSA. People who are now becoming my best friends, the amount of time I spend in American airports. I gotta, I gotta be down with the TSA, right? Um, a headline of, the TSA thinks this Nikon DSLR rig looks too much like a gun. Basically, someone was carrying through this rig that fires off the shutter using a trigger style. It looks like you would hold it like a Tommy gun or something like that. And a lot of comments being sarcastic, like the dumbest thing I've ever seen from the TSA. Thank God you saved us from his camera, blah, blah, blah. I actually agree. 
come on, the front handle sure is just a plastic handle. The back one is specifically modeled to look like a handgun. I think that's fair enough that you're not allowed to carry that on a plane. I don't know, maybe it's just me coming from Australia that has a different perspective on that kind of thing. But just imagine that gets pulled out of someone's bag on a flight, the, the panic that's gonna go on. It's, it's just not a smart idea. Why have it on the camp? I don't even carry my tripod on the plane. It's checked in. So they let them check it in. I don't think it's a big issue. Anyway, deep breath, deep breath. It's, um, it has seriously been such a crazy time. You know, I feel like every now and then I have a month that it's like, whoa, this has been the busiest month of my life and they just keep coming and it just keeps getting more and more busy. I mean, it's good. And certainly I would hate to be in a situation where I don't have enough work to fill up my days, but it's, it's been pretty hectic lately. It's, um, it's been a lot of long days and I really look forward to my flights. I used to look forward to my flights because I could just sit down and sleep, pass out. My, like my flight to South Africa tomorrow is 14 or 15 hours. But now I know I'm gonna have like at least eight hours of work I need to do on the plane. So anyway, it's a, it's a blessing. Oh, isn't that sweet? Next up, uh, just throw up the Ask Matt graphic for me, Chris. If you're following along on Instagram or Facebook, then look out for this graphic. When you see it pop up next time, send in your questions. We choose out questions to answer live in the show. If you're following on Facebook, make sure you go in under preferences and choose to see the posts first. So often, and I really feel bad about this, but I'll share something three times. Let's say I'm going to San Francisco. I'll share three or four times over a couple of weeks that I'm going. And I don't want to, you know, barrage people with this information repetitively. Then I go, and then the day I leave, I get all these messages from people saying, "Oh, I had no idea you were coming. I follow you on Facebook." It's because the algorithm. I'm not paying to promote it all the time, so you don't see it. So make sure you click that to see what's going on. So let's bring up our Ask Matt questions. First one from Lights Will. What's the best practice for naming photos? Uh, photo files for long-term storage. I have to say I'm maybe not the best person to uh, give advice on this. If you're watching live, jump in the chat, give him your opinion. If you're watching this later, then leave a comment. I don't rename all of my files like that. The date and everything is in there. The most important thing for me is I try to be careful about my tagging when I import things to say where it was taken, what it's of, who it's with, if there's a problem with the camera and it's not putting all the metadata in, then I'll add that this was the Fujifilm GFX, that this was done for this video. So then if I, in a year's time, I'm like, ah, Bhutan and the GFX, and I just search Bhutan GFX, all the photos I took in Bhutan with the GFX will come up in Lightroom. So that's how I go about it. Next one from uh, Ash. Vim, there's a lot of vowels in that. Ashvir Maharaj, maybe. Uh, what's your reviews on the Sigma 24 to 70 2.8? Currently, do you still think it's a good FX lens to get if you're on a budget or is there anything else worth looking at for multi-purpose shooting? Um, check out my whole 24 to 70 2.8 shootout that I did, I compared all the options. And to be honest, the Sigma was, it was the weakest of all the ones I tested. I would personally definitely go for the Tamron. And I, I have no inside info, but I guess we'll see a, a new Tamron 24 to 70 come later in the year, seeing they just did a generation to 150 to 600 and 70 to 200. You would guess the 24 to 70 and 15 to 30 will come next which might mean you'll see used ones coming on the market and they're already fantastic. So that's what I'd be looking at if I were you. Uh, Peterson Randall, what do you think of the new Sony A9 for professional use, weddings, portraiture, sports, wildlife? Okay, I've actually got a video coming kind of vaguely talking about this uh, soon, maybe even next week, but I would say that if I'm shooting a wedding, a portrait, sports, or wildlife, there's different requirements for those. So you need to think about, is it as a system and its specs gonna do it for you? Having said that, I do use my D5 for portraits as well, and I could use that for wedding, sports, and wildlife. So 
you know, if a speedy camera at that resolution with those specs is gonna do it for you, then there's no reason you, absolutely no reason why you can't use it for professional work. Can I, I can't say if it's the best option for you or not though. JD, bro, what's up, bro? Um, I'm thinking of investing in both a 35 and 55 mil Zeiss lens for my A7R2. Are they too close in focal length with each other? I'd be using it for street, landscape, and portrait. Before we jump into that, I have to um, ask, why did you use the word investing? Because I hear people throw that around a lot, and I think, so are you doing street, landscape, and portrait in a money-making sense, since for some kind of business? Because an investment should be income generating in the same way that like a house that you live in is generally not an investment, it's a cost center, not a profit center. So if you're talking about you're buying them to have more fun shooting, that's a different thing to making an investment. Don't conflate the terms in my opinion. 35 and 55 are quite different. Some people would find them too close, but certainly I think even 35 and 50 give a significantly different field of view. So the two of them, potentially have a big difference, but again, some people shoot street at 15 mil, some shoot it at 85 mil. So to say whether those are gonna work for you, I can't, but I don't think there's too much overlap there to say, you know, to signal a red flag in my opinion. In life, in photos. That sounds like the kind of a, a sermon. In life, as it is in photos, here is your question. Uh, is Nikon's Nikkor 35 mil DX actually seeing 35 mil and not 52.5 on a crop sensor? Ergo, 50 mil equals 75 DX. Okay, um, no. So it gets confusing, but generally and almost universally, when you read on a lens that it's a 35 mil, 50 mil, 85 mil, whatever, they're talking about 35 mil full frame. Whether it's DX or even medium format, you know, if you see a uh, a hundred mil medium format lens with the reverse crop factor, the actual field of view you're seeing is like 80 or whatever it is, depending on the sensor size. So when you see 35 mil, it's talking if it were full frame, but it's not, so you're correct. It's actually, the field of view you're getting is 52.5 mil. Mateo, should I buy the A7S II over the A9 just for filming? Now, I really rarely answer these kind of questions that are just two options with no context, but if you're just going to be using it for filming, I feel pretty confident to say yes, buy the A7S II over the A9. One, it's available, there's not a back or list on it, and the A7S II is a brilliant filming camera the A9 has stripped out a lot of the film options, including S-Log and all of that, and it looks like a killer sports camera for stills. So yes, if you're only shooting video, I what do you reckon, Chris? I mean, for me, it's a no-brainer. You'd go for... ...pick an award you'd particularly love to win. Most handsome photographer, is that a thing? most self-deprecating photographer. Um, no, not to, um, to I, I like to be positive and bring positivity to the photography community. I think, again, there's you know a big central section who do both and that's fine, but then there's some people who I think focus more on winning awards and then using that as their way to establish legitimacy, not putting them down, but to be able to say I'm, you know, the portrait photographer of the year for my city three years running that brings in clients and then there's people who just focus on building a client base and getting word of mouth to bring in more clients so i'm not in the practice of entering awards competitions like that to submit images win a gold a silver and keep doing it over a year to at the end of the year get a prize I don't have, I haven't had time all week to get a haircut yet, let alone, you know, be making fine art prints and stuff. So uh, to be honest, no, there isn't. I would love to know that my customers are happy and my audience here are happy. That makes me happy. Daniel Luis Cruz Azevedo, awesome name. Um, any tips on how to overcome a period of not feeling like going out to take pics at all? I'm just gonna repeat what I've said a hundred times before. If you're not inspired and you're not getting out there and you're feeling like you're in a rut, 
collaborate. Getting in someone to do anything. If you shoot landscapes, go shoot with someone else who shoots landscapes and chat the whole time. If you shoot portraits, get in a wardrobe stylist and get them to collaborate and suggest things. It just, it'll wake up parts of you that maybe have gone to sleep. Dave Andrade, when starting out, did you rent a studio or did you do most of your shoots outside or in your own home? All of the above. Uh, when I was first starting, at, you know, I wasn't renting studios just to play. I couldn't justify the cost. So most of what I was doing was on location using simple strobes. You check out my Take Control of the Light course. I run through how to do exactly that kind of thing. And in my business of photography course, throwing back to the investment issue, I have a whole section there about where to put your money when you're getting started that's going to make the most sense. So is putting money into studio time worth it? Is investing in a, investing in a whole bunch of gear worth it? Or would you be better putting that money towards marketing, branding, self-education, that kind of thing? Uh, lucky last question, Mark, you, Gasser, Marcus Gasser, duh. Um, how do you carry equipment when you fly? Any product recommendations for packing camera gear? Um, again, we'll, I'll pop it in the caption below or as a card once this video is finally live. I've done several videos in the past about packing things. Let me just summarize it for you now. I tend to, I always try to take all of my lenses on the plane with me in my carry-on and refuse to let them be checked. Having said that, now with the, some of the travel restrictions that are coming through uh, from uh, America, depending on where you're going to or from, you will actually need to check your camera, but still keep all of your lenses with you. If they don't have power supply, they should be fine. Uh, tripods and all of that, I just pack it in with my check-in luggage. Having said that, a good friend of mine packs his super telly lens amongst clothes in a hard suitcase so it can't get crushed and checks it into flights and has done it repeatedly and never ever had any issue with it. My concern with that is not so much about the potential of it getting crushed, is I've seen bags get thrown and I don't do that with my lenses. So that's a, you know, I would be concerned about the shake impact damage that could be done to them. But yeah, essentially that, and then if you're getting in trouble with your carry-on weight, I'll wear my double black rapid, and then if I see ahead of me in the check-in line, they're weighing people's carry-on bags, my biggest camera and lens combos go onto my straps, as much out of my bags go into my jacket pocket, and I hand them an empty bag to get weighed. They can't penalize you for what's in your pockets, thankfully, or your body weight as well. So, And if you're traveling with a woman, generally, well, I don't think I've ever seen a woman's handbag get carried. So if they have a big handbag, you can chuck a whole bunch of stuff in that as well. That'll do us for us, Matt. Just a couple of last little things to run through. First off is our TOG of the week. Thank you, we've had some really great entries lately. I chose today's one based on our theme for next week, travel photography. Don't forget, mattgranger.com forward slash TOG life. Enter your travel shots, win a power bank. It's the Zendua A8 quick charge. Um, this week, our TOG of the week is Lewis Chan from Fremont in California. Check out his link, uh, it's in the caption below. He's doing some great travel photography. The only thing I would say to be careful of if you're going around, like Lewis has gone to some amazing iconic places. Uh, the one that's stuck in mind is like the Marina Bay Sands, but there was so many different locations there and they're all, oh, and now I see the photo here from the headlands of California is actually one of his photos as well. Huh, I just saw that scanning down through, is that if you're shooting these things like the, the floating uh, Torji in Japan and all of those kind of things, they've been shot so many times. If your whole portfolio, even if they're draw-droppingly beautiful uh, shots and vantage points that we've all seen before, you might wanna mix it up and include some much less frequented sites or really unusual vantage points that you know mix it up a little bit but some gorgeous gorgeous work on his site so do jump on over and check that out and whilst you're over at the website mattgranger.com forward slash toglife you can submit your business or your portfolio like that you can submit uh for your what's the other thing photos 
and your business and on social media your questions for us, Matt. Whew, the wheels are starting to fall off, but that's a nice tight 35 minute show instead of my usual sprawling, rambling 45 minute shows. So thank you to everyone for tuning in today. Do uh, jump on over to the social media and follow along. I'll be sharing shots from Namibia from next week for the next couple of weeks. It's gonna be a really fun trip and submit your travel shots for a chance to win. And I'll see you next for Tog Life recorded somewhere in Namibia and uploaded in the next couple of weeks. Thanks guys, I'll see you later.